Yeah, Jeannie. Oh, Jeannie. You rocking out? Yes, I am, because it's Friday, babies. Woo! -hoo! Well, Jeannie's got the first announcement of the day. It is Friday. For those of you who have absolutely no idea what day of the week it is, it is Friday. It is April the 3rd. Welcome to our 9 a.m. kickoff. It's so lovely to see you all. Those numbers just keep going up. I love that. Uh, you know, it, it, it dawned on me that we've spent a lot of time over the last couple of days um, really kind of talking about like doing whatever it takes, right? I mean, the, the idea of, of uh, selling a house, putting a buyer and seller together right now uh, is, is, is crazy challenging. And so it's, it's, that, it's that constant in our heads, like, okay, what else can I do? What else can I do? What else can I do to make this work, right? Am I doing whatever it takes to make uh, something come together? And so I thought that uh, we would kick off our time together this morning with just a, uh, a short video of uh, an example of that. I think it's an example of, of kind of doing whatever it takes to get the job done. So let's check that out. No, that's not it. Hmm. We are experiencing technical difficulties. Please stand by. Okay, hold on, it's gotta be here. Oh, you know what? I think it's here, but it's it's hidden. There we go. All righty. Okay, so you'd think this is the first time I ever did this, right? I think we have a class coming up on how to use Zoom next week, Rick. Yeah, I think I'm teaching it. Yeah. <laughs> All right, here it is. Sorry. Oh my God, I love it. Yeah, it's a really great place. Lovely neighborhood. I mean, I can see the dog running outside and my husband's just gonna love this kitchen. Oh, does he cook a lot? Oh, I'm not married. What's your name? Oh, I'm Doug. May I call you Sam? Uh, why? Would you mind, like, pretending like you just came home from a long day of work? I don't, uh... It would just help me really get a feel for this place and, you know, see if I want to live here. If you could just start outside the door, that'd be great, please. Right, yeah. Oh, okay. Okay, sure. Yeah. Straight up. You want to go outside? Uh -huh. no. Yeah, just close the door all the way. Welcome home. How was work? Uh, it was good. You know, I sold a house. I am so proud. I'm making your favorite dish, chicken piccata. I know, I know. I am perfect. Ah, uh, great. Um, would you like to see the bedroom? Or? Sweetie, slow down. You need your energy. I gotta get you some carbs. Then we can get to the bedroom. Oh, by the way, Glenn and Diane want to have dinner next Wednesday, but I said I'd check in with you first. Uh, Diane and Glenn? Wow, you're so unbelievable. Sometimes I feel like you don't listen to me, ever. Oh, we're still doing this. Uh, thing. You know, you um, walk in here and you act like you're the only one that does work. Okay, I have to clean up after you and I have to put the kids to bed. It's not easy. We have kids. Now. Don't tell me you forgot about Donald and Fantasia. Did we adopt? Because the daughter sounds black. <laughs> She's Chinese, Sam! Wow, you already forgot about the color of our baby. Maybe you should quit real estate and go into something that's more suitable for family. I... <laughs> real estate is a very legitimate... You'll keep it down! You are going to wake the babies! There are no babies, alright? I see how this is. It's not a reality for you. 
Oh God, uh, don't do that, ma'am. Walk out. You know all right. What? You're right. We've been playing house this whole time, just sleepwalking through this life together. But I blame you. You've been aloof. You don't touch me anymore. You've been out with her, haven't you? Oh. Fuck you. Who? You know who? That little whore from the tennis court. I knew all along. I can smell her on your collar. All right. You know what? Maybe we should end this. Right no, now. No, 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 no. I'll end things when it's time. I'll take charge. Because you know what? You're such a pussy. Okay, wow. That's a little inappropriate to, to, to call me names like that. And I don't appreciate She's like your mother. I don't. You talk about my mom. I mean, she is a great woman. And, and don't you call me a pussy. You're the pussy. You little bitch. Little <laughs> Sorry? I don't think that's a Mo approved video. <laughs> no, it's definitely not. And I am, and I, I am absolutely not uh, advocating that route to get a home sold. However, I just thought we could start with, wait, has anyone ever had a crazy buyer? I'm not sure we've ever had that level of crazy and yet you never can tell. So, hey, you know what? It's all about, it's all about deciding how you're gonna get to the finish line, right? How do you think Mike and Kim met? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe we'll do them as an agent success story next week. They can tell us that story. All right. So a couple of quick announcements. Um, the state of New York continues to confuse everyone uh, under the sun. So uh, late last night, I heard that we are likely to hear back from New York today, rescinding what they put out yesterday, saying that they could, uh, that they would allow uh, showings under certain circumstances. Uh, we don't have specific uh, guidance from from the state of New York as to whether they're coming or going at this point. Um, so if I, it were me uh, in the state of New York, I would just I would stay on pause for right now. Um, and we're working on getting you better information as to what what they are allowing and what they're not allowing. Uh, they, they, it, it's it's a little bit of a of a disaster in terms of how they how they are. Uh, disseminating information. So we apologize for that and we'll get you better information as soon as we can. Um, the other thing I wanted to just quickly mention was uh, I, I heard last night that there are a lot of scams going around regarding your stimulus money. Uh, understand that you, you don't have to do anything for your stimulus money, right? If you file a tax return in 2018 or 19, your, your money, if you're eligible, is coming to you. You don't have to file. You don't have to give anyone your, your personal information. You don't have to go to a website and put in your social security number or your banking information. You don't have to do any of that. And so if you're receiving things, calls or emails, texts, whatever, with links about follow these steps to get your stimulus money, do not proceed. Push delete. Trust that the government's going to get you your, your funds if, they're, if you're eligible for them. You do not have to do anything for those stimulus funds. So just be really cautious around that. I don't want anyone to fall into um, any kind of a trap like that. Um, the other thing I, I wanted to show you uh, this morning was there, there's a, an opportunity. There's an opportunity someplace. Um, that uh, I'm going to put this in the chat as soon as I as soon as I finish it. Um, Governor Lamont worked out a deal. You know, we, we do have um, an opportunity for uh, under the, the Federal Relief Act for those people who have uh, mortgage loans backed by Fannie or Freddie. If it's a government backed loan, you do have an opportunity to call that bank and, and work out some kind of um, of forbearance uh, opportunity with uh, uh, arrangement with them. 
uh, for anyone who does not have uh, does not have a, um, a a government backed loan, so not Fannie or Freddie or USDA or FHA. Um, Governor Lamont did work out a deal with about 50 banks and credit unions in the state of Connecticut to allow for, for that same kind of uh, forbearance arrangement to be made. And so I wanna just show you, uh, again, I'll put the link in the chat box in a moment, but that link I'm going to give you sends you here to uh, the office of the, go uh, the governor's website. And if you scroll down, you can see here uh, what that outline looks like, a 90 day grace period for mortgage payments, um, relief from fees and charges, um, so no late fees or, or, or um, additional charges if, if, you're, if you're not paying for those 60 days, no foreclosures for 60 days, and no credit score changes uh, if you choose to access this, uh, this relief. So do know that that's available to you. If you keep scrolling through this, I just wanna show you, um, it, at some point here it says the Department of Banking will maintain an updated list of participating institutions on its website. If you click that link, it brings you to the Department of Banking website. And then if you click right here, mortgage relief for homeowners, and then scroll at the bottom of this page, you will see the participating financial institutions. So it's all these banks and all these credit unions. Okay, so if, you're, if you don't have a, federal, a federally backed loan on your property and you're still looking for a way to, uh, to figure out some kind of arrangement so that you don't have to um, um, pay your uh, mortgage or at least work out a deal where you have uh, an opportunity to pay your mortgage differently. Okay, I think that link showed up now in the chat box. Um, so just copy and paste that and uh, it'll bring you to that, to that site. So uh, if that's helpful, just know that there's a list of all those. I, my, my main advice to you is whether you have a federally backed loan or a, or a non-federally backed loan, and you're, if you're struggling and you need to make arrangements with uh, paying your mortgage or not paying your mortgage, call your bank. I just want you to have some, some ammunition knowing that you have access to, you, you can quote the, the Federal Relief Act, uh, the CARES Act, or Governor Lamont's uh, deal with these 50 banks and credit unions as you're having that conversation, if it makes that simpler for you. Um, all right, so last couple of things before we, uh, before we move to uh, Adonis and Marty Miller. <clears throat> uh, I wanted to, uh, to offer to you that we have a little bit of fun with expense reduction. Uh, expense reduction is something that, that we've been talking about for the last two weeks. Uh, both in business and personal, and I know a lot of us have had lots of um, lots of success um, cutting things out of our out of our budgets uh, at home and in, in business. And so, what we'd like to do is just kind of put all that together in one spot uh, for everyone. If I mentioned this before, I apologize, but I, I think I think I meant to mention it and then didn't actually say it. So, what we'd like to do is uh, have you, if you have your list, short or long, of things that that you've been able to. Uh, cut in terms of reducing expenses. Um, put that in a, in a list, what it is and, and, and how you did it, uh, and send that to either Maria in the uh, Ridgefield Market Center or Robert in the uh, Stanford Market Center. Uh, send that via email. Um, if, if Dan and Steve are on the call, just put Maria and Robert's um, email addresses in the chat box for those people who don't need to have them. Um, send that in. The way you'll have access to the, the big long list of, uh, of ideas is to send us your idea, right? So we're going to compile everybody's ideas together and make that available in a, uh, in a Google Doc. The way you get access to the Google link is share your ideas with us. Big or small, it doesn't matter. Let, let us know what you're doing to reduce costs in your world uh, because I'm certain that something that, that Adonis did, I didn't think of, and something that Bobby did, I didn't think of, and something that Dan did, I didn't think of. And so when we put that all together and we can all just review all those ideas, um, I think it helps everybody to, uh, to, uh, to create more opportunity for themselves. <clears throat> uh, you do have a calendar, a great calendar uh, opportunity today with, uh, with uh, both uh, smart plans and scripts for your database. We do have Ignite continuing later on and um, um, watch the calendar for, uh, for other opportunities. Guys, that's it for me today. Adonis, can you uh, talk with us a little bit about what we're going to see with Marty Miller today? 
Absolutely. Doesn't this feel like a TV show? I feel like this is like the Keller Williams TV show. Like back it to you. Right? Very much anyway. like that to me. <laughs> it's kind of cool. Um, so today, Marty's going to take us through contacts. We're going to start going through the applets on the left side of our screen when we log into command. So he's going to take us through importing a contact and adding all kind of cool things to it. So stay tuned for the next class. <laughs> Good morning, Keller Williams, and welcome back to the Command 66-Day Challenge 3.0, Day 5. Marty Miller coming to you from Houston, Texas, and today we are going to start our contacts section of the Command 66-Day Challenge. And so we're going to log into KW Command, and we're going to click on the second icon down, applet submenu here called Contacts. And today I'm going to teach you how to import, how to add, and how to export a contact or contacts. All right, so the first thing we're going to do, if you have a, a series of contact information, you've got a list of names and phone numbers, list of names of phone numbers and emails, list of phone numbers, names, emails, and addresses, you can bring in all of that data right now using this import button. So when you click on this button, it's going to allow you to download the command pre-made CSV file which will allow you to then fill in that document. And once you have it filled in, right, you'll put in all the names here, your first names, your last names, your phone numbers, your emails, etc. You can kind of walk through this and see all the different columns that are available for data entry. And once you have all of those filled in or as much as possible filled in, you would save that document. You would come back and click on drag and drop or browse and then say yes i want to make this import uh, what's going to happen from there is command will do its best to bring in all of those contacts and then it'll give you an alert so you'll have a little red dot here at the top of your screen and it's going to tell you if you had 100 contacts it'll say something typically like 98 contacts were imported two had errors to see a uh, error file please click here and when you click on that, you'll see a list of the contacts that did not come into your database. Typically, I see them not come in when they are already in your database, meaning that the email that you had for that contact has already been used in your database. Uh, the other time, sometimes we have issues with leading zeros uh, in zip codes. So I think that issue is being solved here pretty quickly. Um, and sometimes there is no name for that contact. So for any reason, you, you have to have a first name in order to import a contact as well. So you'll see that uh, import here, and then all of a sudden your new contacts will show up in your database. The reason I'm not spending a ton of time on this import and that spreadsheet and walking you through it like I have previously is that we're actually working right now with the labs team on finalizing the, the final touches on the import wizard, uh, which will be another tool that you can use. Um, it's much more robust. It'll actually allow you to uh, see all of the column headers you have on your document and then where you want that data to show up in command. You can map those column headers over. Um, it's a very impressive tool and I'm excited about it coming out probably within the next, I don't know, two to four weeks, somewhere in that range. All right, so if I just wanna put in one contact, let's say I'm sitting at my open house, somebody comes in, I get their information, um, I did not use a landing page, which we'll teach you about in the future, but say they just gave me their information, gave me a business card, something along those lines. I could come in and click on add contact. And from there, I'm just gonna basically put in the contact's full name. If I have the wife's name or the husband's name, son's name, aunt's name, all the different uh, kind of relationships you can see here, I could choose to add all of that information in as well. So let's say Donald and Daffy are married. I could put Daffy in here, and there you can see a list of the Daffys that are in my database. So I've already got one Daffy. It looks like I spelled her name wrong. Let's see if Daffy with a Y is in my database. She is not. So by clicking on Add, I have the opportunity then now to create a contact record for Daffy. So what's going to happen is this will create a contact record for Donald with all of this information, and I'll also create a contact record for Daffy with only her name. So I need to come back later and put in Daffy's phone number, email, et cetera. And let's go ahead and put in Donald's information. And I've got his email, I've got his phone number, right? Now I can decide if I wanna mark him as a lead, I can do that. 
You can see here in the background, quadruple A seller was marked as a lead. So what it's gonna do is add that little orange circle. I also have the ability later to filter my contacts by just my leads, just my contacts or everybody using this drop down up here at the top of the screen. So I could choose mark as lead if I wanted to. I could also add to sales pipeline. Next, I wanna add some tags. Let's say Donald is a potential buyer. So I could click on potential buyer. That's gonna add that tag. I can also start going through and seeing all of the other tags that are available. Now, the ones that are in gray, those are system tags, meaning that you should see those in your system as well. The ones that are in white are the ones that I have actually added, or excuse me, any other color other than gray, honestly, are uh, tags that I have actually put in myself. So those are the tags you'll see there. If I click on add more information, I can click on additional contact information. I can choose a preferred method of contact. I can put any additional emails or phone numbers I may have. Maybe this is a work phone number and I had the mobile listed above. I can put in their home address. Let's do my old home address. Right. As you start typing in this address, you'll see it's connected to um, Google and it starts pulling up those locations. So I can select this as the address. Uh, if I have the social media profile, I could put that in. I don't know Donald's, but I do know mine. I don't need facebook.com. I just need whatever comes after the slash on the social media profile. You see, as soon as I start typing it in, it pulls up facebook.com slash and then lets me type in whatever is after that. I can also come in and add additional profiles. If I had Twitter, Instagram, or LinkedIn for the client, I could add those additional profiles in as well. Underneath about, I have the ability to add a legal name or description for the contact. I can put in their birth date. So this is one of the best birth dates around, just so you guys all know. Send me gifts if you'd like. If not, that's okay. Wish me a happy birthday. I could put in their home anniversary. When they purchase their home, obviously this is a buyer that hasn't purchased with me yet, so I don't need to do that. Uh, you can see relationships is also in this about section, so I can add additional relationships. Uh, if I had the children's names, I could put them in here as well. You can see also we have the ability to add in their company name or job title. This is important to get to your 100% contact score. So if you know where they work, you could put that in. Let's just say they work at Keller Williams. So I could choose Keller Williams and they are a realtor, whatever. You can put whatever you'd like as long as it's their company name or job title. Uh, sales pipeline, you can see when I click on that, it asks, have I captured their information or have I actually connected with them? I think I've captured as I have the information, but I've not had a conversation with that person. Connected to me means, yep, we I have their information and we have had a conversation. You can see lead source here. So uh, you could put in, I'm not sure if open house is in here. There it is, open house as a lead source. I may have added that as a custom lead source or the system did, I can't remember. If you don't see open house, then you would just have to choose a lead source that made sense or watch my own, one of my other videos on how to add custom lead sources. Um, and then custom, you have the ability to create custom fields as well. Once I click on create, it says this email is already in use. Please select continue to override or dismiss to return. I'm gonna click on dismiss. I'm gonna go up and say, oh, looks like I did spell his email wrong. There it is. Remember, KW command scans for emails to prevent duplicates. So when I click on create, now that contact has been created in my database and I can find them by clicking on last name search for duck. You can see I've got a lot of Donald ducks in my database. This is the one that we were working with earlier. So if I click on that contact record, it will open his actual contact card. And you can see that I have him in here at 100%. I've got um, the phone number, the email, I've got an address. Because I put in my address, it automatically assigned me to the Imperial Woods neighborhood there in Sugarland. You can see I've got the social media profile as well. Cool thing about this is when we add that social media profile, I can click on it and get immediately taken to their page. Right now I put my social media profile in, so it immediately took me to my page. But if it was their profile, it would take them immediately to theirs. I've got birth date, I've got relationship, I've got a company and a title. So all of that information is there as well. And because I have potential buyer as a tag, I have a 100% health score. 
So that's how you add a contact is basically click on this add contact button and then fill in as much information as possible about the person that you have in your database. Finally, I know there are some times where we want to export the information that is in our database. So we have that ability by making sure we're showing 50, right? This is the max that we can export from command using the export feature right now. I talked to you earlier about uh, using PySync to pull information out. But right now, as far as exports go, we would do show 50. If I wanted all of these people that are in this list, I could click here. If I just wanted to do a few of them, maybe I just want to send something just to the sellers, but there's three of them. I would then come up, so click on whoever you want to export, select bulk action, and then I can come down and click on export contacts. It'll say your export was successful. Please check your notifications. I can say, great, remember my notifications show up in this little bell. If I hit refresh, you'll see the bell lights up. There's the little red. Okay, when I click on it, it says your export contact part has finished. You can download it by clicking here. When I click here, it's going to open up a spreadsheet or at least download a spreadsheet. This spreadsheet should look very familiar, right? Because this is the exact same spreadsheet that we were using earlier to import contacts. So you can see all of that information there. And then I could choose what I want to end up doing with this data later on. So that's essentially how we export. You also have the ability very similarly to export contacts for mailing labels as well. And that's down here at the bottom. Once you do that, again, it'll say your export is successful. Please check your notifications. Let's do a quick refresh. And I can see I now have a second notification. Your export labels has finished. And if I click here, I'll get that spreadsheet as well. So guys, that's it. The first part of contacts today in the 66 Day Challenge 3.0, how you can import contacts, how you can add a contact, and how you can export contacts. As always, guys, it's great talking to you, and I will look forward to speaking with you again tomorrow. Thanks so much. I hope you enjoyed today's video with Marty Miller. I mean, I think I saw a movie or a cartoon a while back where Donald and Daffy met. They definitely didn't get along, so I don't know where he gets off, assuming that this is going to be the case. Anyway, um, on Monday, we're going to talk more about custom tags with Marty Miller. Hope you guys have been enjoying this journey. Hope you have a great day today. Plug into as many classes as you can, as makes sense for you, of course. And we'll see you at 4.30. Have a great day.